Okay, in this video we're going to be checking out the LDARC 200 GT. This is a 5 inch lightweight quad and it's designed around uh, the FPV egg uh, pod here and this is basically two aluminum side cage pieces here and their new uh, stack. Uh, if you saw my earlier video on the FPV egg, I think I did one on the Pro 138, that's a 3 inch model. Essentially the electronics on the inside are the same. You got a FPV camera with a 100 milliwatt video transmitter, which is uh, on the bottom here. And you got your 20 amp 401 ESC and your F4 flight controller now with a Betaflight OSD, so you can make your pitch changes in your Betaflight OSD. And I did a review on this stack already. I'll put a card in the corner if you want to see more details on that, as well as the previous video on the 3 inch version of this. Essentially, they've taken the components from that. And put it onto this five inch frame it's a unibody frame so it's a, a not separated arms and i believe it's four millimeters thick and in order to get the uh, weight down they've gone to some smaller motors here these are some sunny sky motors uh they're 1806 2500 kv pretty decent motors it keeps the weight all pretty light i'll give you weight here in a second uh, one downside to this is i wasn't able to use the props that it came with so it came with these these green uh, King Kong branded uh, 5040 props. And you do want to use some lower pitched props on this because uh, they do warn that using a higher pitched prop will probably burn the motor out because these are smaller motors. So if you're using a really aggressively pitched prop, say like the Gemfan 5152, that would not be recommended unless you want to smoke your motors. Now, um, I because I couldn't get this prop on there because I think there's some sort of an issue with their manufacturing on these props the hub is too small I was not able to get that onto the motor shaft of any of these motors so I, I, I tried and I tried and I tried and I couldn't get them on so I just gave up and decided to go with these props these are from uh, these are some Dow props and these are the um, uh, 5040 cyclone so it's a pretty it's a similarly pitched prop but it obviously the shape is completely different here um, I did go with the pit tune that it came with so I figured if it's a similarly pitched prop, it would probably be okay. The weight is a little bit more for four of these. I'll put the weights up for the uh, King Kong uh, and this one. It was I think it was maybe like a gram, gram and a half more for four, which is not a whole lot. Um, but if you go with a more uh, a, a prop with a much heavier pitch or heavier prop, you're going to run into issues with this one because this is really meant for lightweight flying. Um, Basically, you want to keep the build of this down because the motors are smaller. You're not going to be able to uh, put you know, massively huge props in this one. Now, one other thing to note is that this model uh, only comes as a plug-and-play, not a bind-and-fly like they usually do on some of their other models where the receivers are pre-installed. Uh, like, uh, I think the, uh, the 138 3-inch one, you could have your choice of XM uh, Plus receiver, uh, free, uh, Fly Sky, or Spectrum receiver. In this case, it's only plug and play. So I did add my own XM Plus receiver, you can see right there, and it just plugs into the back here. They do include the little um, plug with the, with the wires, and I'll put a little picture up here on how I soldered that up. It's just it's pretty easy to do, and that is the only downside about this. If you are don't know anything about soldering, this might be you might have an issue here. You might need to get someone to do that for you, but it is only three points of soldering. You plug it in, and of course you just uh, run your your uh, antennas up here. I'm just using some zip ties here to get the antennas away from the frame. Got pretty good reception, um, but yeah, that, that's pretty much the only downside to this model. I like pretty much everything else about it. I just wish that they would have come out with a, um, uh, a bind and fly version of this so you don't have to go through the hassle of installing a receiver you can just go charge a battery and go and fly it and uh, speaking of batteries it doesn't come with a battery but you can use a wide variety of batteries with this one uh, i've seen people use as low as an 854s uh, you could use a 3s if you want to go with like a, like a bigger 3s like say a 1800 3s for example i'm sure that'll be fine i used a 1000 4s um, i've seen other people use a 1500 for us and get like extremely long flight times i got about six minutes on a 1000 milliamp hour for us so um, it's a pretty lightweight setup it's not going to be like super fast for racing but it is pretty fairly agile it is a bit floaty because it is lighter in terms of weight um, but you, if you want looking for like the five inch experience but you want like better decent flight times uh, definitely check this one out 
and uh, let me give you a weight measurement now. Okay, so here is the weight without the battery, and just under 200 grams. So I guess if you use a pretty lightweight uh, battery, you could probably get this uh, close to or around 250 grams. Okay, so I'm just going to be flying this with the stock pids, and I'll just go ahead and show you what the uh, pids look like. Here they are. Uh, they might be not quite right because of the different props, um, but should be pretty close, or should be close enough, so we'll see how things go. It's pretty windy out today, so let's see how this affects us. This is a little bit a lighter, a lighter build here. I am flying with a 1000 milliamp hour 4S uh, Trinity Graphene battery, so not the biggest battery, not the smallest battery. thought it would be a pretty good sort of middle range battery that would show the performance of this lightweight 5 inch. So no ill effects from the new props. Pretty good. No, no oscillations or vibrations. This tune seems to be pretty good for this prop too. I can definitely feel the wind. So obviously this being an 1806 motor is not going to be as powerful or fast as a 2306 motor. And I think you probably see the difference here compared to the, uh, the Batman 220 that I flew here at the same spot a few days ago. So you can kind of compare the, the speed of this to that. I don't think this is really meant for uh, racing, although you could obviously race this. This is a really different class of 5 inch and uh, it's really meant for, I think, for beginners, for people that are looking for a lighter weight quad, maybe something a little bit more. It's going to give you a little bit more flight time, for example. Uh, obviously, this performs pretty good for an 1806. It's lightweight, but try and compare this to a 2306 motor, one of those guys. Uh, you're going to be disappointed, but uh, for this class, for this size, it seems to be okay. And this tune seems to be fine. I'm not seeing any major uh, vibration issues. And they have pretty good control. Seems fast enough to me. So 14.8, uh, 15.2 volts here and about two and a half minutes. This is probably going to give you a really long flight time. I think um, uh, on their website, or maybe the product page, if you're using like a 1500 milliamp hour LiPo, which is about obviously 50% larger than this 1000 milliamp hour LiPo, I think they were saying they were, you can get 10 minutes of FPV flight, something like that ridiculous amount of time. Not sure if I'm going to last that long. So I, went, I did go with the lighter battery. I think if you go with the, the heavier battery, uh, you know, the performance is going to suffer a little bit. You're not going to have as much power on the punch out. So if you want a little bit more performance, you know, go with a smaller battery like this. And you're still going to have really good flight times. So I wouldn't be uh, to where I think I think a thousand milliamp hour is probably a, a, a good sweet spot for this size weight. Uh, you know, I don't think you're going to be too disappointed in that. But if you want super long flight times and and can give up, you don't mind giving up a little bit of performance acrobatic ability, and you just want to go for the ultimately long super long flight, then yeah, go for 1500 or 1550. Uh, and fly for like ever if you feel like it. Uh, yeah, definitely, that's definitely possible. And I'm just kind of see how long this battery lasts or see how long uh, I can fly this before I, I lose my mind.
Yeah, definitely don't have any issues with control. It is a little bit more floaty than obviously a heavier quad, which is to be totally expected. It's definitely more floaty. So it does, so that floaty characteristic does, does play into the handling a little bit. It's not quite as sharp in the turns. As you can see here, I can turn it, but it's a little bit more muted. Obviously I have no issues with actually controlling it. It's just that I think it just, gets, just takes a little getting used to because it's obviously the weight difference and the power difference. Um, I'm not exactly sure if that current meter is any accurate at all on the bottom. Uh, I'm just going with the stock settings. I just moved the stuff around on the OSD because uh, it was just cluttered all over the place on the st uh, stock configuration and I don't like things like the artificial horizon and all that kind of stuff. So I removed all that stuff. But yeah, it does have a current meter on there saying that I'm drawing 28 amps. Uh, four motors, that's about seven amps per motor. That's, and I'm at 28% throttle, just kind of hovering around. I'm at 13.6 volts now, at five minutes and 45 minutes, five minutes and 45 seconds of flight. So probably gonna have to land it soon here. Yep, I'm now, now, the, now the voltage is dropping, 12.8. 7, 12.6, so I'm at the end of the battery here. So I'll go ahead and I'll land it. Pretty good flight time for a six minute flight for the 1000 milliamp.